talking in terms of of a, of a, of a Jew, talking in terms of, of Jewish experience, the golus, the exile, the exile simply means that we do not recognize, we do not observe, we do not see. In many cases, we, we actually were never exposed to understanding and to seeing that there is a spiritual life there is eternal life. One can have grown up a yid today. We can find a yid like this. We can, and my children come back all the time and say, I got a karkafta. You know what a karkafta is? A karkafta means a person in the, in the 50s and 60s who never put on film. It's called a karkafta. Never put on film. It was never, he never was in touch with that. And therefore his spiritual life is completely drained and he spiritually is a stick. He has no understanding of spirituality. So this Eid, we all understand, we all appreciate what a great mercy it is on this nominal stick, a person who's got a soul, who's got real life, but he's not in touch with it. So we would think that if a Ayid descends to such a level, and every one of us has some aspect of it, more or less, but essentially we're all affected by the Gomes, we're all affected by the physical world, we're all affected by the fact that, that the world outside of the yeshiva does not recognize the principles and the value of what we learn in Yeshiva. And therefore, there is this aspect in us, there's this conflict, and there's this aspect in us, what is this spirituality all about? We, 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 can, we can much more readily relate to the physical. So this is, in effect, a net negative. This is where Bali Tshuva, like all of us here, come back and say, <coughs> we are at a disadvantage. You know what disadvantage means? Disadvantage. We are, huh? that's right. Cross it We are at disadvantage. Because we are starting up, coming from a, from a dry land, without water, as, the, as, uh, as the David Amalek describes it, without source of life, and we have to start from scratch. In comparison to others who grew up as Yidin, who grew up from childhood, going to yeshiva, going to cheder, going to yeshiva, and so forth, having a normal, a normal growth pattern within Yiddishkeit itself. So, in this respect, the golus is really a net negative. It's something that causes, um, has deprived, deprived us from being connected to life, and in, in effect deprives us, it would seem, from having the full understanding and full appreciation of what, what the Torah is, because we start at such a great disadvantage. For this comes the second half of this week's Pasha, which is Pasha's Masai. Masai means journeys, travels. 
You know that in this parsha, this is mission. Tomorrow you will start this parsha. Moshe Rabbeinu recounts all the, the entire journey through through the desert that didn't travel in the. The concept of a journey is a person when he didn't move throughout the, the, the desert. This movement was not just that they were moving, going slowly from station to station, going to a certain point. They went in various circles and then came back to the same place. The idea of the travel is that a person moves with a certain impetus, with a certain inspiration, and then when he comes to the end of that and he achieves that, then he comes to a rest. In this rest, after that he absorbs all that he achieved in the previous journey, he starts a new, a new journey. And then he, he, when he achieves that and he comes to a rest again, he absorbs it he, and he fully comprehends it and goes further. In other words, this illustrates a process of growth. Just as when you learn something, so you learn something new, you're struggling trying to understand it. Once you understand it, then you go and repeat it again so that it should be, you should feel close to it, you should feel comfortable with it. That's called the, the, the Hanina, that's when you are at rest. While you are laboring with it, this is called the Masa, you're traveling. Once you understand it, you repeat it again and say, oh, now I see I'm, I'm quite at ease with it. I have absorbed it, I understand it. Then you start going further. This is called Masa. Now, in learning in general, and even in learning Torah, in general, in a person's growth pattern, there are two types. There are two types of movements that a person goes through in his life. One type is when the person essentially what's called broadens broadens means he increases his knowledge. Increasing the knowledge means that he already, he knows his base, he knows the, the, the essential way to live. And now he, let's say he is, he is, um, 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 he is learning to drive a car. So he learns to drive a car. And then as he experiences, he becomes more experienced in driving, so he becomes more experienced in driving. He doesn't change from driving a car to, to flying an airplane. Driving a car is not going to teach him how to fly an airplane. It's totally unrelated. He's going to become a better driver. So even though he becomes a better driver, in, in further terminology, this is called standing on one place. He's not really moving. Because essentially, he's just improving on what he already knows, what he already accomplished. Moving, that's called Mahalech. Mahalech is, means that he is able to move out from one set of parameters to completely a new set of parameters, a completely new view. This is what's called moving. Moving means that one can, can change from that which um, yesterday not only did he not know it, but yesterday he could not possibly know it. He couldn't possibly understand it. It was completely beyond his, his comprehension. And then as he, as he, through his effort, he changes, and he opens his mind, and he is able to comprehend that which a day before was completely unimaginable that he should be able to understand. This is called movement, a complete change.
So, in this Sikha, the Rebbe explains, this is, this is the Rebbe, so to speak, the hint that we can learn from this Pasha. It's discussed in Chesidus in many ways, but in this Sikha, the Rebbe explains this must is so must, that we have to understand that in order for a person to reach the process that's called Masa, the process that's called complete, continuous movement, when, one, when the movement means that he moves out completely from where he was to a new place, and then he continues on to move further to a new place, that becomes possible because of the gods, because of matters, because one starts, like, like we discussed here, you know, about Shuva. And Baal Shuva has had this profound experience where he, he came from a place that is completely and totally opposite of Torah. Opposite of third of you, not just of knowing third of third of you, couldn't believe that uh, could, couldn't make sense. What is this all about? They could think of it as a, as a theory, as a philosophy, but that this should be a way of life doesn't make sense. It doesn't exist. And then, from this devoid, from this void, from this dry land, he comes, he breaks through. And, you, and he recognizes it, and he starts going on this path. This is called coming from a state of mato, of, of mato, he's coming from a state of a stick, where he has absolutely no sense of what Yiddishkeit is about. That facilitates, that gives him the ability to progress and to grow way beyond anyone who did not have his experience. Because this effort of breaking through is such that allows him to grow indefinitely. Even to the point where someone who, who was born and bred and, and, and in Yiddishkeit could, not, could never understand, could not teach. And this is the remez in the union of matis and masa. That matis facilitates the real movement. A movement of a call that, that, that's rightfully called masa. And this is what I want to focus in today with you. Everyone here has experienced sooner or later, and this is something which comes back to me all the time. When one sits in the yeshiva and he learns, and he reaches the point where he's, he loses interest. I can't sit no more. I, do, I don't see what I'm accomplishing. I don't see what, I'm, where I'm, what the next step is. The reason for that is that we have reached the next masse, the next journey. Did you ever experience after a fast? After a fast, we just had a fast, she was the times. So in the fast, we become, generally speaking, young people become hungry. We become hungry. Some people get a headache, some people got weak. But there is some effect from, from fasting. At the end of the fast, you sit down, and depending on the day, well, you take a glass of water. 
or you get a cup of tea, or a piece of cake, all of a sudden I'm not hungry anymore. I don't need anymore. I'm finished. Because the acute hunger that you felt a moment ago has now been satisfied. You don't realize that really you have to eat a whole meal. But you but because you have you have now assuaged, must I say satisfied the acute hunger that you felt a moment ago, so you don't feel, you don't feel the hunger anymore. This is the same process. When one first comes to Torah, one feels an acute hunger, an acute dryness, an acute emptiness. And then he feels every day something really, you know, accomplishing, something that he becomes closer and becomes more related to Torah and Yiddishkeit. After a while, and not a very long while, he doesn't feel that anymore. He doesn't feel that dryness anymore. He doesn't feel the acute hunger anymore. So now he says, so what now? And the answer is that this is, he is now, so to speak, in the process of masay in the process of journeys. What he had satisfied is just the, the surface feeling of emptiness. He had not really elevated himself completely from, from the, being a stick, from the dryness that he was in before. It's just on the surface he feels better. In order to revive the stick, you have to imbue the whole stick with life. It's not enough that on the surface the stick becomes moist. It has to be permeated with life through and through. And this is a, a whole other process which, which, is, which requires effort requires sometimes hard effort, hard labor. But what we are, but what the accomplishment of this is that not only will he revive his soul, revive himself, but he will actually be able to reach a sense and an insight and understanding that which without this process and without this challenge he would not have been able to reach at all. I was once asked, I don't remember if I ever related this, I was once asked in class, not here in the city, it says in Tanya that, that even a tzaddik, one who has fully grown up and become a tzaddik, he still has ups and downs and he still has to relate, has to rely on his chinuch, on his child, on that which his mother trained him as a child in order to survive these ups and downs. So this was also a group of Bali children. And they asked me an obvious question. What about us who did not have, who did not have the upbringing with Amuna, with faith, with, with Torah, when we were children? What do we rely on? How do we go through the turbulence, ups and downs? So I explained to them then the, the, the power of the childhood, of the childhood um, absorption, that the child learns from his mother. Why is it that that does, is always survives and, and is always there? 
the reason that a child survives, that this way the child learns as a child, always survives, is that when his mother tells him about Hashem, tells him about Torah, he, uh, he accepts it with his whole heart and with his whole mind. He does not, he does not judge it. He does not un- give it limits. Okay, this is, this is what it means, I understand. No, he just takes it in completely with his whole soul because he's completely open to his mother's teaching. And therefore he absorbs it with his whole soul. And once it's absorbed in his whole person, then he can never lose it. Because this is the clear thing that defines him himself. That which a person learns as an adult, that's learned with his intelligence. That has a certain limit. I understand it to a certain extent. I agree with it to a certain extent. To a certain extent, I still need to investigate so it's not absorbed fully and that's why there's all these ups and downs. So explain then that about Shuva, about Shuva who turned around his life, who went from a completely, as I said, from a stick, a completely dried up spiritual orientation and turned around and broke away from that and and said no I, I recognize that I want to be here I want to be in, in Yiddish I want to be in Torah at that moment that moment is very precious that moment when you made that decision that moment when you recognize that he can now turn around and change his whole life's orientation. It's not just I'm going to learn something anew, but he turns around and changes his whole perception, his whole path in life. From being a worldly orientation to a Torah and Yiddishkeit orientation, even though he doesn't know anything yet. But that moment of decision, at that moment he sees clearly just like a child, exactly what it is he's looking for. There is absolutely no confusion there. That moment is a moment where he, it's not just his intelligence or his emotion or anything that brings him to it. At that moment, this is his whole person. He knows, he sees, I don't belong here, I belong here. And that brings him that breaks breaks him away from there and brings him here. Even though he still has a long way, so to speak, to go and to learn it. That moment, this is an example of a masa. This is an example of an isiya. This is an example of a journey. Of a journey where a person actually had an insight and this insight had propelled him and, 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 um, and pushed him out from one world to a completely different world that he knew nothing about. And this is so deeply imbued in a person and it's so clear that you never lose it. And this is what holds him throughout this process of ups and downs. Because if he remembers the moment of that decision, he knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly clearly what it is that he's, he's come here for. There's no confusion there. But we can readily understand the power of this experience the power of this experience is such that gives us here the ability to to repeat this type of experience to repeat this kind of movement of a drastic change whereas someone who has grown up normally he doesn't have that, that sense, that power 
of, of, of completely changing his position. A Baal because of his, of his experience, has that capability. And his whole process of learning, his whole process of growth, is an entirely different manner than that of, of one who has not gone through this experience. Because he actually knows how to do it. He knows what it means to move away from one perception to a completely different one. So that actually, this matters, this low level, this dry state from which he comes, becomes actually a positive force, indefinitely, a continual positive force that can continue to, to work for him and to raise him further and further. When he comes up to the moment when he feels when he feels like I said he doesn't have that interest anymore at that moment this is when he reflects back and he says well wait a second before I came here I also didn't have any interest and then I found that there is so much and I, and I was able to change my life around. The same thing at every interval, every maso, every journey, every state that a person reaches, uh, so to speak, um, that he feels he has reached a point he's not, he doesn't know where to, further to go. Every one of these moments is a similar challenge where he, where he, can, can summon his strength and say, okay, I have reached this point, that's very nice, but now I have to understand that through further effort, I'm going to reach a point that is equally distant from where I'm now and equally higher than from where I came from. This is called Maso. One who has this pattern and this path in his life of, of growing in this manner, where he changes around, I mean, breaks away completely from, from the previous state to reach the new state, there is absolutely no limit in terms of depth and clarity of understanding a Vedic kind that he can reach. This I personally have had experience, and I, I, I'm learning with Balad Shuba at this point, 40 years, and I personally have seen that if one really does not stop pursuing the path, as difficult as it is, Balad Shuba has the capacity to understand Torah and particularly Hasidus, even better than someone who, who was born into it. And as I always point out, it's a very limited opportunity here. Everyone here has a very limited opportunity because of, simply because of the age and, and the state in which we're in. <clears throat> and the, the recognition of the, of the preciousness of this opportunity, not giving in to disappointment, not giving in to laziness, not giving in to, to disinterest, but continuing on is something which is a tool that only about Shuva has. And, you can, and this can really elevate a person from the lowest depths, from a, being a stick to being a living tree. Um, 
this is basically the message. I know I have a little more time, but I'm not just going to. This is the message that I have for today. And again, I want to give you my personal bracha or whatever it's worth. My wishes that you should all succeed and go what's called Mikhail Okhoi from strength to strength. And none of your disappointments, as we show them, should ever stop you from continuing on. Because each one of these disappointments is another opportunity to become about Shuba all over again. To break through another barrier and to get a new insight in what this is all about. And then you can go indefinitely and carry it through into your future lives. Yeah. The travels you said they were in like a circle, right? Some of it was circle, yeah. So, so how is that the whole Matei in the sense of going away from where you are to a new... What? You explained that Matei is going away from the situation you are to a higher level. So why is it in the circle? Like if they are always going to the same place. It's... Um, <clears throat> it's just like we're learning now the Seder Matas and Masai. Last year we also learned Matas and Masai. But... Between last year and this year, there was a whole year. So Matas and Masa this year is not the same Matas and Masa that was last year. You understand? Totally different. That's what the circles are about. You're making progress. Yep. Excuse me? You might seem like you're in the same place, but... Yeah, you're making progress. what's called a cyclical pro- pro- progress. You're yeah. You know you know how how um, a um, a rocket that propels a um, a um, um, a Sputnik around the earth. It cannot go up straight like this. It goes like this around the earth. And each circle that it circles, it increases its distance from the earth slightly. So it, even though it goes a whole circle, it seems like it's in the same place. But really, when it reaches the same spot again, it's a spot that from the previous spot, it couldn't reach it. There's no way. It couldn't go up that way. You had to go. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? The way, the way it, it runs is like this. So every time, yes, every time that it that it reaches the next spot and facing the same location, it is now it's in the same location, but it is now at a height that it could never have reached before.